Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about basically uh, locally uh, advanced or metastatic melanoma, uh, and that's basically my topic. Um, whenever we see a patient with a melanoma, several questions come to the mind, and some of the question is whether how to treat this patient with a metastatic locally advanced melanoma, or which patient should be treated, and what is the objective of the therapy? Is the disease is curable or palliative? Um, what regimen, dose, and schedule should be used, and can we personalize the therapy based on the molecular characteristic of a tumor? Now, how big is the problem of melanoma? If you look at the incidence um, in the men's, it counts uh, fifth in terms of incidence, and total number of cases is 42,000. It's around five percent of the total incidence of the malignancy, while it is seventh in the female. Now, if you look at the incidence 2015, the incidence of most of the cancer is going down. While if you look at the melanoma, whether it's a men's or the women's, the incidence keep increasing, keep rising. But good thing is most of the disease is local disease, and most of the patients are cured with the surgical resection. About five to ten percent of the patients do have metastatic disease at the time of presentation. Another way to look at it is among cancer in patients under the age of 40, uh, the incidence of melanoma is second only to that of the breast cancer in the women's and to the leukemia in men's. So this just tells you how big is the problem. As far as the mortality is concerned, there are about 46,000 cases uh, died because of the melanoma in 2008, which increased to 48,000 in 2010, which is an increase of 5%, and there's an expectation that it may increase by 20%, by 28% by 2020, and probably it will be over 62,000. Now, if you look at all the publication up until 2010, there were more than 3,000 publications in melanoma metastatic disease, and none of the different chemotherapy regimens used showed any improvement in overall outcome. And these were the drugs which were approved uh, in 1967, uh, hydroxyurea was approved by the FDA with the response rate report 10%. Decarbazine was approved in 1975 based on one phase two trial with the response rate of about 23%. The survival in general of the metastatic melanoma range 5 to 9%, 5 to 9 months with the no evidence in overall survival benefit of any treatment. If you look at the combination of chemotherapy versus single agent DTIC, the combination has better response rate comparing single agent, but again, there's no improvement in overall survival, and the combination, of course, increases the toxicity. What about the TKIs? There was a one phase three trial using um, uh, sorafenib with the chemotherapy including combination of taxol carbo with and without sorafenib. This was published in 2007. And as you can see, there's no improvement in overall response rate, benefit, disease free survival, or overall survival. So there's no chemotherapy, there's no TKI which can change the outcome of the course of the patient with the metastatic melanoma. So in general, response to chemotherapy is about reported to be 10 to 20 percent. Combining drugs improves the response rate, but there is no evidence there is an improvement in overall survival, and of course there is an increase in the toxicity. And there is no role of second line chemotherapy. And this was one of the quotations from Dr. Sondek, who presented in 2010 in ASCO, and he says there is no documented improvement in survival over the past 30 years. Uh, no new FDA-approved drugs for melanoma from 1992 to 2011. Until this year, first-line therapy of questionable value or support care, no established second-line therapy at all, no proven role of combination chemotherapy. So this is, we were in just a few years ago, up until 2011. Now comes, uh, there's a change, now melanoma become the uh, model cancer get all these uh, saga for the immunotherapy started and it, it improved the outcome. And the first thing was in 2011 uh, came is a target therapy. Now basically a target therapy that you identify a specific target on the tumor cell and you hit the target with the drug with the hope that it will control the disease. But it is not so easy because you only identify one target but there are a lot of other underlying interconnected pathways 
And that's why in melanoma, none of the target therapy cure the patient. There's an improvement in survival, but none of the target therapy as of now cures the patient. Now the target which are identified most common in the in the melanoma is BRAF is the most common, which is a which is found in 40 to 50 percent of the cases, followed by CDK4, which is in 34 to 35 percent, CC and D1, 20 percent, and CK in about 2 to 3 percent, and N loss in about 15 percent. So most of the work is on this BRAF and MEG pathways. Now basically, what happened that when you block this BRAF or MK pathway and MEK pathway. Basically, you control the internal um, st stimulation of the pathways which are responsible for the growth of the tumor. So if you block them, either DRAF alone with the debrafenib and the venulafenib, or in combination with trametinib or cobimetinib, you try to control the uh, tumor progression. Now, there is also an evidence patient who have a mutant DRAF. The response to chemotherapy is much less than those who are non mutant or wild type, the response to chemo is about 11% versus 33%. So this was one of the first trials published in 2011, which changed the look into the melanoma, the outcome of the melanoma. And this was basically the rafenib, which is a BRAF inhibitor, uh, were randomized between the chemotherapy, which is decarbazine, which is considered to be the standard of care. And this was a randomized trial, 675 per, uh, patients were randomized uh, on this trial. And the outcome, as you can see, there was an improvement of disease-free survival from 1.6 months with the chemotherapy to 6.9 months with the remrafenib. And there was an improvement of overall survival from 9.7 months to 13.6 months. So this is the first time in over 45 years a drug has shown an improvement in overall survival about four months in a disease which is not responsive to any treatment. So this was the beginning of the change in the management of the melanoma. But the problem is when you block BRAF, there are other pathways which stimulate the MEG pathway. And because of this, when you treat this patient, there's an increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma, which is about 26%. So when you combine the, the BRAF with the, with the uh, with the MEC pathway, there's a decreased incidence of uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, and there's an improvement in disease-free and overall survival. As you can see here, this was a randomized trial combining the brafenib to the trametinib. Uh, disease-free survival and overall survival was improved. Similarly, with the remilofenib and copimetinib, there was an improvement in the outcome with the combination with a decreased toxicity of the, especially the squamous cell carcinoma. So basically, in, the, in terms of key point for target therapy is uh, ref meg inhibitor combination approved by the FDA, including combination of debrafenib and trametinib versus vembrafenib or cobimetinib. It improves the survival and um, comparing the single agent to BRAF inhibitor. Uh, there's a less skin toxicity, especially the squamous cell carcinoma, but there is other increased toxicity, especially the febrile episodes. Then come uh, immunotherapy. Everybody is talking about it. You all know about immunotherapy now. And basically, what happens in immunotherapy is you have a specific, you stimulate basically your immune system. Your immune system will take care of the cancer cells. That's the theory behind it. The drugs which were approved before 2011 were interleukin 2 and interferon. Especially interferon was approved in the H1 setting, and interleukin 2 was approved based on the activity on one of our trial. The overall response rate was 16%, uh, 6 percent was CR, and 10 percent was PR, with the duration of response of 8.9 months. But the interesting finding was that 50 percent of the patients who responded they have a long-term disease-free survival of seven years, and that was the one of the reasons that this drug was approved. So basically what happened that a high look interferon appear, appears to be beneficial in patients, but it's very toxic. And basically when you're treating with high dose interferon, basically you are inducing septic shock in the patient. So you need the special expertise, ICU support, and all these kind of things to treat this patient. But as a whole, there was a proof of principle that immunotherapy can change the outcome 
in patients with melanoma. Then come CTL4 or cytochrome T cell lymphocyte associated antigen, which is a naturally occurring negative regulator of the immune system. And it is expressed on the T cells and the CTL, and it binds to B7 molecule, which is present on the antigen presenting cells with the high affinity to CD28, and thus stop the T cell proliferation. Now, this is just a diagram to show you that there is a uh, on, on, the, on the antigen presenting cell or tumor cell, there's a B7, and on T cell, there's CD28. Usually, there's an interaction between these two. This interaction results in the activation of T cell. When you have CTL4, CTL4 has more affinity to B7. And when there's an interaction between these two, it inhibits the T cell activation. So, if you block the CTL4 with the monoclonal antibody, which is epilumumab, you basically try to create the environment. So you can have the uh, interaction between the B7 and CD28. So this was one of the randomized trial in the patients who were treated previously with the chemotherapy, randomized between the epilumimib plus GB100. GB100 was the antigen which, is, which was proven to be have some activity in the melanoma. So randomized between the combination versus single agent versus GB100 is a single agent. And as you can see, patients who receive epilumibib with or without GB100 have better outcome in terms of overall survival comparing GB100 uh, single agent. What about with the chemotherapy comparing with the uh, epilumibib? This is the another phase three trial. Patients were randomized who were chemo naive, not treated before with the chemotherapy. 502 patients were randomized between the combination of epilumibib decarbazine versus decarbazine alone. As you can see, with the combination, uh, the survival was much better in favor of epilumibib versus uh, decarbazine alone. 11.2 months versus 9.1 months. So this is the second evidence that there's a drug after the targeted therapy that it shows beneficial in terms of improving the overall survival in a disease which was very fatal at one point in time. So the question is how do you sequence in patients who have BRAF mutation? Should you give them BRAF uh, target therapy first or you should, you should treat them with the epilumibib? And there was a one phase two trial which shows that if you use BRAF inhibitor first, followed by epilumibib, the survival was, disease-free survival was 9.9 .9 months. But if you change the sequence, if you use epilumibib first, followed by the BRAF inhibitor, the survival was improved. So just an indirect evidence that even in patients who are BRAF positive, and if they are uh, in good performance status, the first treatment should be um, immunotherapy or epilumibib. Now, what about the role of PD-1 or the programmed cell death in patients with a melanoma? You know all this, you have seen this cartridge many times, that you have PD-1 and PDL one on a tumor cell, and there's an interaction, it's, it has inhibitory um, signals to T cells. When you block this interaction, you stimulate the T cells, and basically they stimulate the immune system. And this is one of the phase three trial in patients who are EP refractory patients, Randomized between the nivolumab, 3 mg per meter square every two weeks versus chemotherapy. And as you can see, this is a overall response rate was much better comparing, um, comparing with the chemotherapy versus 38% versus 5%. What about in patients who never receive any treatment? Patients were randomized between the nivolumab versus decarbazine, which is the standard of care. And the endpoint was overall survival, and secondary endpoint was progression free survival. And as you can see, at one year, the overall survival was 70% versus 46%, and at two years, it was 57% versus 26%. So more than double actually at two years. Median survival was uh, in favor of uh, using the epilumin as a first line. Now, what about the expression of PD1? Any patients, whether they are negative or positive, they all benefited from the uh, uh, from the PD-1 uh, treatment in the volume. Of course, those who are positive, their response was much better than those who were negative. But comparing negative or positive with the chemotherapy, they all benefited with the volume. 
at one year, 70% were to 46% of the patients were alive. Treatment response rate was about 40% versus 14%. What about the pembrolizumab, which is another PD-1 uh, antibody? And uh, this was a randomized trial using uh, in patients with AP refractory melanoma. They were randomized between pembrolizumab 2 mg Q3 weeks versus 10 mg Q3 weeks versus chemotherapy. And as you can see, the response rate with the pembrolizumab, whether it's 2 mg or 10 mg, was better than the chemotherapy. And so is the disease free survival, progression free survival, 20, 16 to 21 months versus 0.6 months. And overall survival was better, 11 versus uh, 14 and 3.4 months. But it was not as expected, but it was still better. Um, uh, so there were basically no difference between the 10 milligram pembrolizumab versus 3 milligram pembrolizumab, and so that becomes the standard of care is 3 milligram per liter squat. Another trial comparing uh, pembrolizumab with the epilumimab, and here you can see 10 milligram of epilumimab, uh, pembrolizumab Q3, Q2 weeks versus Q3 weeks versus epilumimab 3 milligram per liter squat for four doses. And as you can see, at 12 month. It was much better in favor of pembrolizumab. So whether you use nivolumab comparing epilumumab or whether you use pembrolizumab comparing epilumumab, the activity of nivolumumab or pembrolizumab is much better in terms of oral survival benefit and disease free survival benefit. So the next logical question is combine these two drugs which are most active in this disease, which is PTL1 and the CTL4, which is epilumumab. So there was a randomized trial, about 945 patients were randomized between the combination of nivolumumab plus epilumumab versus nivo alone versus EP alone. And as you can see, the benefit of combination was much better. The response or progression free survival was of the combination of nivo EP was 11.5 month, nivo alone was 6.9 month, while EP alone was 2.9 month. So both these arm was better than comparing epilumumab. Now what about the uh, PD-1 expression, whether less than 5% or more than 5%, still there's a more response whether NIVO alone or combination of NIVO epilumumab. As you can see, 54 versus 43% versus 17%, or if it is more than 5%, then 72% and 57% comparing to 21%. So whether it's less than 5% or more than 5%, they all response. Of course, more is better. So approved uh, indication for the PD-1 is nivolumab single as in 3 milligram per meter square, uh, 3 milligram per kg Q3 week, uh, Q2 weeks for unresectable uh, metastatic melanoma with and without BRAF mutation. In combination, there's a randomized phase Three trial I just showed you is nivolumab one milligram per meter square uh, per kg plus three milligram epilumumab Q4 weeks times four and then nivolumab three milligram Q2 continue until disease progression or single agent pembrolizumab two milligram per kg Q3 weeks. But of course there is a price to pay. There is a toxicity because you are playing with the immune system. So immune system when it is stimulated you control the cancer cell, but it also can damage the normal tissue. So you can have the encephalopathy, you can have a CNS symptoms, you can have an eye problem, iritis and all this kind of things, you can have a skin toxicity, you can have the respiratory so and pneumonitis, which is a very grave and you have to identify it earlier in the course, uh, otherwise patient can die, you can lose the patient. You can have a hepatitis, you can have endocrine, especially hypophysitis and uh, thyroiditis, you can have the colon, uh, colitis and diarrhea, and you can have a neutropenia and all this kind of things. So you have to monitor this patient very closely for all this toxicity. Next question is, is there any long-term survival from any of this immunotherapy? And the answer is yes, there is. Now, this is a long-term follow-up of the patient who are treated with epilumumab. And this is a long-term follow-up of the patient who are treated with interleukin. As you can see, with the interleukin, if you, if you look at the uh, tail of the curve, about 15% long-term survival with the interleukin too. At the same time, if you look at the epilumumab, the long-term survival is over 20%. <clears throat> now, this is a follow-up of about 1,861 patients who were treated with the epilumumab. 
And as you can see, the three-year-old survival is about 20%. So patients who survive three years, they usually survive and they are cured. So there are about 20% of these patients can have a long-term survival in a disease which was very fatal up until before 2011. What about the long-term survival for nivolumab? As you can see, the long-term follow-up of this four-year uh, four-year follow-up on this uh, checkmate 003. Uh, as you can see, the one-year survival is 63%, and the four-year survival is 42%. This is nivolumab, and what about the pembrolizumab? 40% three-year survival, and 45% for those patients who were not treated with the epilumab before. So what to do first? Factors to consider DRAF status if wild type only immune therapy is an option. Disease burden, if you have a BRAF mutated patient with a high disease burden on poor performance status and you need immediate response, then you should treat that with the patient with the therapy as a first line. If the disease burden is low, you can start with the immune therapy. Patient with a good performance, uh, consider combining PDL1 with the CTL4 combination. Patient in the poor performance status with, without uh, BRAF mutation, uh, tr consider them treating them with a single agent uh, involvement of PD1. So, this is where we are. We started in 1975 with a decarbazine, then we have interferon alpha, which it was approved as adjuvant in 1990. Then in 97, we have approval of the hydros IL2. Then after 2011, we have approval of all these different drugs, including ipilimumab, venbrafenib, debrafenib, tramatinib, pembrolizumab, and in 2016, combination of pembrafenib and covalumumab. So where do we stand? Uh, nivolumab is better than ipilimumab. Yes, it is better. And the combined in the randomized trial shows median progression free survival 6.9 versus 2.9 months. What about Pembro? Is it better than Epilimumab? Yes, it is better in the randomized trial, 5.5 months versus 4.1 month, uh, Q3 weeks versus two, Q2 weeks versus 2.8 month. Is Nevo combination with the AP is better than AP? Yes, in a randomized trial, progression free survival, 11.5 versus 2.9 month. Is Nevo plus AP better than Nevo? Yes, combination is better than the single agent Nivolumumab. Nevo than AP or vice versa. This was a phase two trial in which patients are treated in a different way, whether they receive nivolumab first or epilumumab first. Patients who receive nivolumab first, they did better than the epilumumab patients. What about the BRAF and MEC combination is better than BRAF alone? I showed you this combination is better. Survival 11.4 versus 7.3 month. IO before BRAF, MEC combination versus BRAF. There's the evidence uh, based on the phase two trial that immunotherapy first is better in patients who are in good performance status comparing the combination of BRAF and the MEC. Combining, BRAF, uh, combining immunotherapy and BRAF MEC, this is the ongoing trial under evaluation. So this is where we are in 2017, immunotherapy G1 inhibitor CTL4 inhibitor IL2, they are approved. Target therapy BRAF MEC and KIT approved. There are 10 different combinations, or all these different combinations are used. Future direction is incorporating new therapies in the adjuvant setting. Combination of all these different drugs. Management of the resistance is an issue. Sequencing therapy, how do you sequence which one you should do first? The no phase three trial, probably it will be done in the future. So in conclusion, immunotherapy can produce durable anti-tumor response in some patients with the cancer treatment of patients with immune checkpoint inhibitor can be different than with the conventional therapy. There are a number of challenges particularly resistant to the therapy and work is in progress to combine different target therapies to overcome the resistance and prolong the survival. Now this is just a question if somebody wants to answer it. Preferred first line management of metastatic melanoma without BRAF mutation is close observation, epilumumab, venlofenib, anti-PD1 antibody. Anybody wants to answer the question? Huh? D. Good. Thank you very much.